At BR Performance Studios, coaches truly believe that sport and fitness uh, need to be athlete-centered. That's why we've decided to expand our field of view and commit for all of our athletes who are eager to know more. So everything here, everything that we do, will be based on knowledge. So if you have a question, all you have to do is ask. If we have an answer or if we don't have the answer, you can guarantee that we will go out and find it and get back to you. This is our, our new podcast, Be Our Words. I am Coach Melina and I will be your host today. Okay, welcome yeah. back to the podcast. As I said, we're truly committed to knowledge here. Um, but first of all, we're going to start with a series of episodes uh, called Meet the Coaches. Uh, in our last um, in our last one, uh, uh, the episode that we did focused on on myself. So today we're going to turn the tables onto our head coach, uh, Coach uh, Joao. Welcome to the show, Joao. Hello, everyone. Um, so for those that um, don't know you, uh, you are from uh, Brazil. Yes, uh, I'm you from have Brazil. been in Dubai thirteen years. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you focus primarily on endurance and strength for endurance sports. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to go into um, into this field? Mm, I think it was not the decision. It actually, was an was a natural process. I did not. Um, I did not had the. Um, when I finished my university, I did not have a, a very um, uh, clear plan to go into triathlon. It was more like follow the uh, the path that I started was football coaching, uh, uh, fitness coach for football, and uh, I was I did that for a very long time actually. But I was always very connected to endurance sports like swimming, triathlon. Uh, but for myself, at that time, I did not see any transition in my life was going to be football. Okay. Uh, and then at some point when I moved here, I actually start to think of if that's exactly what I wanted, if that was the environment that I wanted to work, um, if this was going to be possible to fit my lifestyle with sports and being more active. And then at some point I said, I didn't, I don't think this is going to be the way that I can live for the next four years, let's say, okay. because the lifestyle in football is, is very different and the, and the environment is not ideal to, to, have, to have that uh, routine, let's say. How, how did you get, did you play football as a youngster and that's how you fell into it? Or no, was, no, I did not. Did well, I played, but not uh, as an athlete. I played for fun, and, but uh, my family is very connected to one of the main clubs of my city, so international. Okay. We have a grand-grandfather played there, okay. then my cousin worked there, so it was kind of like, yeah, of course you're going to work there, yeah. you know, it's, you have to work there. So, and I actually love it, it was not forced, I, it was um, still a really, it was really good years, 10 years. Yeah. Um, and uh, so because my cousin is a uh, football coach, yeah. so I started to coach um, the fitness area. And that's, okay, so that's how, it, yeah. that's how football, that's how it that's how football yeah. came. And football came after university. Yeah, I, I, the first semester I started to do the internship there. All right, I was 17, so 18 years old. And it was the proper internship, you know, the guy that had to carry the cones and move the, okay. yeah, they used me for anything, okay, yeah, dogs to carry that was, the, yeah, that was yeah. you, okay, right. And, um, but, you know, when you were young, um, you I was really you happy, yeah. yeah. Uh, and inside of that environment, it was extremely competitive, um, which I realized after all these years, it was very important for me, okay. because it put, it set the bar very high, you know, because that club is, is probably the fifth best club in the country. Oh, okay. It's a huge club with more than uh, more than they have a hundred uh, thousand members. Wow. They are world champions, so the, it's a big thing, yeah. you know. And uh, the position that I had was 
under the, the professional team. Okay. But internship. So for me it was... So it was a big, back then, especially like as a 17 year old, that was a big deal for you then. You yeah. got into this big club. And you feel the, comp the competition, you know, you start to learn the level of yeah. uh, discipline and start to have the commitment that the sport required. When you are a fan, you don't see that. You just see what happens at the yeah. end of the game, yeah. But when you are inside, you're like, oh wow, these guys, they are training every day, 8 a.m. to 11, and then they, we go back to the ground at 3. And then you could finish at six and the next day you do again, again, again. So, and that, that was really important for me to, I mean, I always had the training process in my yeah. head from swimming, uh, but I think the, comp um, the competition that I experienced there, um, the environment of being, ha uh, to be organized and yeah. to be, uh, learn how to plan a season how to set up a plan for yeah. the whole, you know, to work with a lot of people because we had like 45 players. Yeah. So I think the whole thing there was um, my, let's say my playground so for was, coaching. So it was quite formative for you being in that environment. Much more than the university, yeah. you know. So, so I missed two semesters oh, because okay. of that. So how, how did that tie in with uni then? What, at university you were studying uh, sports master. science? Yeah. Yeah. That was a crazy day. Um, I remember because I had to go to bus to the club, right? And then okay. seven a.m. there, and then eat there. Okay, so you pretty much yeah. lived there. Almost. Then <laughs> stay there the whole day. Then like one of the coaches, luckily he used to live close to my university. Okay. So he drove, or oh, every day drove me back to university. Then stayed until eleven p.m. Because I did wow. it in the evening, okay. Uh, to be able to work there, and the next day again, and then I decided to enter on the swim university team okay, when so I was twenty one. And so you were so still in between everything. I was swimming. Yeah. So swimming was your that was your background. Yeah. So uh, I was twelve, and then I was swimming. Then one of the coaches said, "You know, there is this triathlon." Um, you should try, you should go. And I said, yeah, okay. But for me, it was always about going long, even when okay. I was young, you know. So 800 meters, 1,500, that okay. was my, mm -hmm. my thing. And running, you know, all everybody, ah, he can run forever. You know, this kind of Not thing that people, yeah, <laughs> yeah. people say to you and uh, don't realize, but of course now it's like, oh, this was always there. So, 100 laps around my building, this kind of thing, I always had this plan. Um, who can go longer, who can okay. go f further in the water, yeah. who can do this thing. So, um, I think this was always there. And then, from when did I did my first triathlon, I actually... You did your first try at the age of... 13. 13, yeah. okay. I actually really love it. And then... Um, then I stopped for a long time, I think, um, from 15 to very long time, to 18, then I did another one, then I stopped again. It was on and off, it was not really easy to set up a, to buy, ride a bike in my city, yeah. I didn't have a bike, it was not, I didn't have a good system, you know. Um, we, we didn't want to buy a bike. Because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Okay. No, it's kind of a little Which these, messy. To, to be fair, these are all kind of similar questions that age group athletes would have now. Like when they yeah. ask us what, to, what bike to buy and what to get. Yeah, it's exactly. How much do they commit when they don't actually know if they're going to yeah, carry I was, on into I was sport. a proper beginner, young beginner and very... Um, my parents, they were like lost in information. Nobody could ask anything. Yeah. So I had to borrow a bike and borrow the helmet and it was like everything. And, but uh, yeah, now I remember, but we had a, a PE coach that was a triathlete. Okay, so that's cool. So that guy was pushing me all the time. Every time he saw me like stopping, he was like, hey, come train with me. So, but uh, again, two bus, go there, run, yeah. a little bit, go back. So it was a bit, it was not easy to train. Um, the city that I live is, there's no cycling. Which path. is? Sorry, just Porto for Alegre. those, okay, those uh, I don't know. In Brazil, you okay. used to live there. So, 
I know that teenager taking the bike from home, going to, uh, in Brazil, you know, you never know what's gonna happen to you. Um, uh, you know, so I think, yeah, if we push a little bit, maybe I could continue that, that yeah. path, but I think nobody was really prepared to take yeah. that journey, you know. Um, my parents working, you know, so they probably said, you know what, let's leave it. For now, yeah. yeah. How, um, did, how did you feel about that at the time? I mean, it, it seems I, like the, there was no clear plan about what you were going to do. You were kind of going from one to yeah. the other and it was a bit more well, organic. Then from there I said, okay, so I will focus on aquathlon and we, I kept doing aquathlons. Okay, so many, many, um, run, swim, 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 run. Yeah. yeah. They did many of those and then won the state championship and this stuff. But, okay. but I think it was not enough maybe for me uh, and teenager you know when I turned 16, 17 I just start to to, to enjoy life <laughs> <laughs> okay as most of us do yeah okay um, but the sports so they were uh, I always that stayed with connected you. to sports yeah you know, somehow um, I even paddle I was playing paddle tournaments okay I mean my level you know <laughs> Uh, so then, but the triathlon somehow was always in the back of my head, you know, okay. I was always thinking about triathlon and Conan somehow was always okay. in my head. Even Since, as, even as a teenager, yes, that was still there. Yes. Okay. I think that think of Mark Allen, you know, yeah. David Scott, that, that, you know, the fittest man in the world, the Conan, the, yeah. the, the image of these guys running in Hawaii. I think Hawaii picture, yeah. you know, Hawaii style of mindset, this kind of thing. It was always attracting me somehow. And I never actually that time, 2022, and I thought it's not going to happen because I was far yeah. away from, from yeah. that. Um, and slowly I start to get back into, you know, when I had a break from football, I joined um, uh, a gym to okay. to coach in a gym. Okay. Uh, what what brought that uh, change on? So this guy, the 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 head coach of that gym, um, he's a Ironman guy. Okay. And um, we clicked, you know, like uh, yeah, you know, I do this, you do that. So, and it was purely like by by lucky. But the guy, he did like 11, um, 11 Ironmans. So, Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so that, um, he said like, I gonna, s so I joined that gym and two weeks later he turned to me um, and said, let's do an Ironman. At this point, would you have been ready for an Ironman? No, no, I was, okay. <laughs> was not ready at all. So it's a big, let's say I had a big experience before, then I stopped, but okay. Yeah. It's like a beginner, okay. right? Um, with a sports background. Okay. Um, but at this stage, if I'm, re if I'm understanding it correctly, although you had, you were in sports all your life. Yeah. Um, at no oh, point, an yeah, uh. it wasn't systematic training in, no, the, in, was, the way, uh, in the way that you know it now. No, no, no was, I was working, I was coaching. Okay. So I one hour gym, you know, maybe a 10k run here and there, but maybe football with friends. That yeah. was more like being active than athletes. Than an athlete. Yeah, okay. I, but coaching football full time. So my that head was, was that. Yeah. So you had two sides. So from a, as a coach, you were quite structured and systematic. But as a an, a, an athlete at that time, or as you know now, athlete. you weren't. You were yeah. just being physically active. Yeah, I was not an athlete. Okay. I to worry um, about that. What we'll um, we'll take a quick thirty seconds break, and then we'll come back and um, and talk about your transition into being um, an athlete. Okay. In order to take you to the next level, we have to know two basic metrics, which is where you are now, your base level, and where you are going, your final goal. For this reason, we create a system called BR stages. The BR stages consist in four levels. Number one, fundamentals. Number two, skills. 
Number three, performance. And finally, specialization. Okay, welcome back to um, our podcast, Be Our Words, today. Um, my, I am Coach Melina, and we're having a chat with our head coach here at BR Performance Studios, um, Joao. And he's, we're getting to know him a little bit better and um, get to know his background and what's brought him to where he is today. So earlier on in the podcast, um, Joao spoke to us a little bit about his childhood and how his, um, how his career started. Um, his uh, professional career as a coach started primarily as, uh, in football, mm -hmm, which is um, quite different to where, he is, uh, to where he is now with endurance sports. Um, and as an adolescent, you, you were very active very involved in sports but not in any systematic yeah in a systematic way yeah, so you yeah. weren't as you as you kind of made the distinction earlier you were active and involved but you wouldn't call yourself an athlete not no not back then no, no. okay um you were at university studying sports science but by your own admission work kind of came first yeah um within with the big um football club um and then by the age of 22 ish yeah, is one. when you really um I, you started your new job mm, yeah I th uh, when i turned i th i can't remember exactly but i remember that i had two years um at swimming me for the university team mm -hmm. and that was a really hard swim session was that your first taste of I, I think that it was most probably the yeah the, the beginning of the feeling like, hmm, that's I quite like nice this. yeah we were four guys only uh, okay. this guy came to work for the university and he was part of another swim academy okay. in my town and he kind of left them in a not good term so he okay. said okay guys we're gonna smash them and he put that <laughs> in our heads but we were only four you know okay and uh this the other team this is like 50 people yeah um and we bought the idea you know so for two years we were really swimming for people working was a high level swim we were doing 7ks in the pool wow yeah it was a big it how was did, a big swim set how did you find because if we think about swimming usually most you know top level swimmers start mm much much younger you're at university so you're in your early 20s um but i was always swimming i was uh, even so for me it was i always kept some kind of activity so swimming twice a week but did you find the transition into like um proper yeah. training controlled structured training difficult or did it come yeah. easy so what i did um but I, so my background was swimming, you know, mm. I had, I was part of a swim club for long, many years. Yeah. From eight to 14, 15 years, okay. I was swimming uh, with a coach. Um, so when I came back to swim, this guy came, set up the team and one of my cousins, we studied together and um, um, he's a very good swim, really high level swimmer. Yeah. And so he entered on the team straight away. And then he said, ah, come, let's go. I'm like, no, I'm not going. But what I was doing was um, the coach left the training on the board. So you would go. So I was, go, uh, I was going another time and doing the training uh, until I felt that I was in the same level. Okay. So one day I just show up and I did the whole training in the lane behind, beside him. Okay. And the guy was looking at me like, what, what's going on? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, then I told him, so I joined the team. Okay. Um, when, so I, after a few years was too much, like I was smashed it down because swimming and working like that was it's impossible. Too much, yeah. Too much. Uh, and we didn't have a um, halfway, you know, was, he was owing. Okay. So I had to split trainings 5 a.m. and then midday and an evening it was impossible and then work in between yeah at the football working club. and then yeah. pick the work pick it up i got to, uh, to coach actually team not be the internship so it was a bit more traveling we travel a lot yeah with football 
uh, was not really possible to continue. Yeah. And you know, the f when I, you look at the future and say, okay, I'm going to be a professional swimmer, of course not. So I had to choose. Uh, the coach did not like so much. He felt that I didn't. You weren't like, committed yeah. enough. So that was another experience for me to uh, that I take with me when I'm coaching people. You know, when you see some guys, uh, they need to stop. They struggle. The life is a little bit up and down. Yeah. I always remember that moment because so I I look at him and I'm like, man, how can you cannot understand? You know. Yeah. It's clear that I cannot continue. So work. So I guess working with um, age group athletes as we do now is this is something that's at the back of your mind Always. when you see them. Obviously, yeah. they're trying to balance work, their sport, their hobby. Um, yeah, it's only because um, no matter what we want as a coach, um, there is a point that um, you know the 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 the, the athlete yeah. has to has to know the priorities, you know, yeah. uh, even if you, they come and say, I really want to do this, but as a coach, you analyze everything around them, the person and you say, yeah. I don't, maybe it might not now, time. you know, yeah. maybe later. So yeah. I had this experience that those years that I had one and a half really good year yeah. where my life was a little bit stable. And then the club came to me and said, okay, we want you to take this responsibility mm. and you know when you train that level your energy during the day is not the same no. and your mind is focused on you know what I have to recover what I'm gonna eat what yeah. I, you know and I couldn't uh, handle both so I, uh, I now when I think about the guys and everything I with with certain level of um, training we try to accommodate of course there is a push there's always like I think yeah. you can do but with knowing that um, it is important also to find that but you don't want somebody to stop right yeah so how I mean how did you make that decision I guess and how did it um, how easy was it to let go of the sport to an extent and focus yeah. on I think work? my mistake at that time was to stop if I look you back, completely stopped at yeah, that stage. I said I cannot do anymore. Yeah, but I think I was in a little uh, transition. I did some yoga, you know, okay. so I was a bit different. And um, if I look back, I, I could say maybe I could do three, to four times a week. Yeah, but you know, like when you have the all out or nothing. Yeah, that was kind of that mindset at that time. If I don't train that much, I cannot compete. So, so why yeah. are I gonna do? Um, probably, I should have find a better way that time. You know, uh, I can I can I can see how that happened. I yeah. mean, I know myself after I came out of swimming and out of sport, I almost found that if I only had half an hour to go for a swim, in my head it was like, well, what's, why are you gonna what's go? the point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and. And but now we know now yeah now as a coach yeah. i know that actually it is it is worth it but it's i think and i don't know where you stand on this um those that are engaged in fairly high level organized sport especially in younger years mm -hmm. um we don't seem to be or there doesn't seem to be enough support in helping us come out of that so then yeah. we suddenly come out of this big bubble and this big structure yeah, it's kind and of it's like now what? are you lost yeah, yeah. So how how was that experience yeah it was you? it was not good because for me that time was um uh expectations so what i what happened because i felt that the coach did not accept Support you. so i got angry and then i said you know what now we're gonna I'm stop okay. so it was two things that went wrong. Um, my mindset, my personality is always a bit strong, so I always take a little bit of this decision. Yeah. You know, um, kind of okay, it doesn't matter. So then, but then you find yourself alone without the team and the coach. So what are you gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the, it was a problem. Uh, the guys they kept going, you know, for another 
uh, good years, they, they seem grow, you know, yeah. so it was really nice. And then I finished university, so kind of disconnected. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So from there, I, I, I remember, then, then I really stopped, I think, I had a break again uh, with sports for another one year. Do you think that, I mean, looking back in hindsight, was that, um, did, did you really need that, even though it kind of came, um, it uh, developed on its own sort of thing, or did you benefit, I, I guess what I'm saying, did you benefit from a, taking that step back, did you miss it? I need the, I need always a goal, I always need a goal, so I had a goal to be on the, that image of being the, the swim guy of the university, Yeah, it was really cool, you know. 22 so oh who is the swim team ah oh, this guy's here yeah who's the football team this guy's here. you know that thing was really cool yeah when i didn't have that i kind of like hmm so I wake up 5 a.m and do 7k swim no you know why i was not gonna compete yeah. anymore um so until i i found another big goal, goal. was it took time yeah um and that came later on with this guy that I joined his uh, gym, the gym. And, and then he that. said let's do an, an Ironman and uh, I had no proper idea of what you were letting yourself what I for. said yeah because yeah. I said yes let's do it okay but I always wanted to do so so for you a, a clear goal and a clear focus like without it you can't or at the time anyway um, no even can, now I need that. You need, I need a very, to focus and on. I need a big goal. You know, for me, at this point, for example, um, to be able to structure everything, yeah. um, I need something very clear and bigger than before. Yeah. Um, it, it has. To, that's why the UAE man came. Yeah. You know, when I felt that, okay, I did this, this, this. Now, um, I didn't. It sounds a bit weird but i didn't feel that an, another ironman was going to motivate me you know oh. <clears throat> so that's okay. was yeah but don't 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 get me wrong here it doesn't mean that ironman is not important it was after those ironmans that i had done and i felt um really good things yeah. in all of them i learned a lot i felt that my mind needed um a bigger challenge need yeah it needed um uh something that was going to uh confront my brain in a way that i feel like i might not be able to do okay because the ironman got to a point that with a certain training um, i was going to finish and then with a little bit more training i was going to get faster okay you know um and then eventually so it wasn't Kona one yeah. more time, right? Yeah. And then I went to Kona. So yeah. uh, it was more like, okay, take this box. Take the box, yeah. yeah. You know, Kona is done. Um, maybe another Kona in another time, but for this period of my life, I don't, I I don't need else. again Kona. Okay. You know? um, I went there, I love it, I experienced that. It's amazing. It's a beautiful place. It's Kona, you know? Yeah. So, um, do I want to go again? It's not very clear for me yet. Okay. Because you know? I felt that I gave to Kona, let's say, what I wanted. Yeah. Um, so you, you set your goal and you felt you you did it justice. Yeah. So you gave it your all, you were very yeah. focused on it, ticked the box, you, yeah. qualif you qualified Nine, in Malaysia, right? Yeah. And so. You ticked the box of the tough Ironmans as well. You did Lanzarote, you did Malaysia, nice. you got to Kona. Nice. Yeah, nice. We'll give you nice too. <laughs> um, I need to do yours. <laughs> that, yeah, you yeah. need to do Wales. Yeah, uh, I think that's going to be my next one. Okay. Yeah, Wales yeah. will we'll take the yeah, box. To finish that one more, yeah. yeah. That will so I think we found your next goal. Yeah. Okay, um, we'll right, take another. That, yeah. We'll take another quick thirty seconds <laughs> break, and then we'll um, we'll come back and um, explore a little bit more of what your challenges are going to be next. Your <laughs> cycling experience is based on two main pillars: a scientific power-based system and music. 
The power-based system allows us to measure the performance of each member in the class and the music and the rhythm work as a trigger to the state of flow. Right, welcome back to um, Be Our Words. Uh, I'm Coach Molina and we're here with uh, Coach Joao today, getting to um, know him a little bit better. Uh, where we left off earlier um, was when you first started looking into, um, into Iron Man. Oh, yeah. um, and we've had a, an, an interesting chat about how, um, where goal setting fits in how you need a certain level of focus for you to be able to apply yourself into into training. Um, how does that transfer or translate into your into your coaching now? So when you have an age group or athlete that comes and says, "I want to do, I want to do triathlon," mm -hmm. um, and say they're a, they're a complete beginner and um, not very clear on where they're at, what are the sort of first steps you take? Um, yeah. with them when they join I think I think nobody is really understanding when they start what they want to do yeah. my feeling is that people they have um, they have a certain general idea of what they are doing which is not exactly clear for them what, what I mean is we have in our hands the feeling that we are doing this to finish a triathlon yeah. Yeah, you know, but to be honest with you, the, it's much bigger than that. It's a whole transformation process that you go through. You know, it's the whole discipline, the mindset, the uh, the the work that you do with yourself to accept certain things, to let go of other things, to prioritize the training, yeah. the lifestyle. So when you enter, oh, I went to the triathlon. What you're actually doing is changing the way. Uh, you live, you, live. you know. Yeah. Um, most of us need that kind of organization mm -hmm. to be able to function around your life. Yeah. You know. So the the triathlon is the structure gives you the structure that everything else has to fall into. Around. You know, around that thing, um, and that's exactly what people are looking for. They're looking for a certain structure that they put a goal there and they say, okay, now I have to work properly my life to, a, to achieve that goal. goal. If I don't have that goal, my life starts to fall apart and then things start to go wrong. I don't know what I have to eat, what time I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I don't have any more clear path because work is not anymore uh, for most of us, is not anymore that goal you know so you are doing the work and you have the mindset of i will achieve certain things yeah but doesn't it doesn't look and people are like really setting work goals to structure their lives yeah what i feel is people have the work and then they need something to live the life yeah you know, so what they live the life for us triathletes uh, or sports people is the sport you know, it's kind of like, okay, I work, now I'm going to live. Yeah. Let me live my life. It's yeah. the sport. So it works, works the enabler of, of the sport that they yeah. have. Yeah. And it just yeah. adds, it adds, to their, adds to their life. Well, I, I figured out that um, with the years, you know, like throughout the years, I'm like, what are you actually doing? Because when you do the first time, you're so focused on finish that race that you don't have this time to think about what yeah. I'm doing, you know, what I'm really doing. You have those thoughts, but they are like, okay, don't think about it, just keep yeah. training. Um, you have to finish the first Ironman, and you're going to finish your first Ironman. And then I done that, um, and I moved to Dubai, um, not knowing anything about Dubai. Okay. So I did not bring my bike. <laughs> I, I didn't know Dubai. Um, my work was pretty much... Um, in the afternoon, right. so I had morning free, free, <laughs> um, but I didn't know anything here. Okay, you know, it was thirteen for almost fourteen years ago. Um, no Alcudra, no <laughs> no Alcudra. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I was lucky yeah. because I was always lucky at this um, with these little situations because one of the fitness coach in the club said, 
I go to Mamza Beach, uh, okay. and there are two lifeguards there that they do what you do. Okay. He didn't know what I was doing because I mentioned that they did this, um, and I, he, I said like, "What triathlon?" Yeah, they go in the sea, then they run after. I'm like, "Really? Okay." So I went there. Yeah. To see them, and they were actually triathletes. Okay. Uh, so we. <laughs> We, s- we created a small team, nice. I know, yeah. I forgot the name of the team, it was something, yeah, but it was only s- us four, okay. so myself and three of the lifeguards, okay. and that's all was me doing triathlon in Dubai wow. when I came here, and I didn't know no one, but for me it was okay, I, I was training, you know. So, I mean, that's a pretty big move to come from Brazil to, to Dubai, and obviously, you know, like we said, 14 years ago, things would have been very different in Dubai. Um, how did that, given how you said earlier that having a clear goal, a clear focus on why you're training, um, how did that, because that would have been a pretty big transition in your life, how did that affect yeah. your, did you have a goal set or did at that point it was more a, a work related goal uh, and the sport work. was on the side or? Yeah, it became work because you know, I moved here, so I was the head of the Al Nasser Academy okay. fitness coach. So I had, um, I had ten categories under me. Okay. So from under ten to under nineteen athletes, I was leading the programs. And at this point, it was you were focusing on strength and. So I was doing the strength and conditioning mm-hmm. for all of them. Okay. Um, and during four years, so. The first two years, I can say that I really did not think about triathlon. I had my bike in Brazil and I was like, should I bring, you know, bring, I don't bring, what I do, I don't know where to bike. But, you know, then you start to know people. So the guy said, ah, oh, everybody rides in Mamzer. And I was mm-hmm. living five minutes from the beach. Okay. So <clears throat> I said, ah, there's a way, you know. Uh, I got to know about... So those lifeguards, they helped me a lot. You know, they always like a coach. There is, because they call me coach. Uh, At that time, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coach, there is, I was always the coach, you know, maybe because my name is hard to to say. (laughs) It's easier to say. It's easier to say that, yeah. Yeah. So you kind of slot in that role pretty naturally. (laughs) It goes like that, even if I don't know what to do. so the, they said this is international triathlon in Abu Dhabi, uh, then mums are races, I'm like wow, there's things going on. Um, I start to talk a little bit of try to buy guys that time, but like not much, you know. Uh, uh, my focus was to work, you know, so I didn't have too much um, like thinking of oh, I'm going to do another Ironman, it was not in my head. Uh, during that period. After two years, um, it changed a little bit because I felt that the club was changing and I'm like, hmm, I think maybe soon I won't be working here anymore. Okay. And then I start to know a lot of Brazilian guys. I start to coach them. They start to ask me for triathlon coaching. Okay. Uh, then I had a friend that wanted to do triathlon and the other guy. Um, and then I met Natasha, my wife. Um, on the last year we got married so last year of the club um, so when she moved here um, I had a better structure in my home of course <laughs> obviously yeah, <laughs> need women to if you know what I mean, yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> then it was e- easier to train uh, and then I decided to do another Ironman and my so, plan so you, so you took sorry to um, yeah, yeah. So effectively, when you had the big transition from a, I guess, a professional point of view, when it, which involved the move from Brazil to here, um, you took a step back. You kept your fitness going. Um, kind of. Yeah. You um, kind of used triathlon by the sounds of it to help you settle in here in terms of meeting people and doing yeah. stuff. Um, but it wasn't until work and I guess work and home became a little bit more stable that you then switched it back to say okay now I'm quite ready to consider a big big so you can imagine a single yeah work in this club 
I work three, long, four long hours. hours. Not much. Not long hours. No. Not at that stage. You do uh, now. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, Dubai. Yeah. So for me, it was hard to keep uh, the discipline to train. You know. Uh, and I didn't fight to keep that discipline. It was not like, oh, I have to do, I have to do. It was like, okay, you know what, it's fine. And uh, doing it gym, um, I was really, really close to our Shabbat club. That is in Mamzer. Okay. And that club set up the first um, structure that all the clubs they have now. Okay. So they put a 25 meters pool and then a gym in front of the pool and they had a indoor bikes okay. in front of the pool right so the structure was there and i was the first member of that club uh <laughs> okay. they opened and they i came because okay. the the lifeguard said coach is open you should go there so i entered that the girl said you're gonna be the first member so i was three years member of that wow. club uh you know i swam the pool i had the bike there the gym you, you know and it was yeah. just keep going uh, and the lifeguards of the Mamza the, Beach, the Mamza Beach yeah. they knew the lifeguards of the club. So we all met. So uh, your, your club started to grow. Then my <laughs> club, my team was growing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we had a picture, I have a picture of them, we were 11 people. <laughs> that's pretty good going. That's a good, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. start. Look at we you could now. have there's a fight around, with BR. <laughs> You've gone from 11, from 4 to yeah. 11 to what? We got 85 now, yeah? yeah? Yes. So that's, that's how it started. Massive yeah. growth. Yes, it's crazy, it's crazy. I look back, I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, I, sometimes I like, even get scared, you know, how grow. Uh, then, I, so the last year of the club, um, I knew, we knew that we we're going to get out of the club. Yeah. And I sat with Natasha and I said, during the, the last year of myself, um, that I worked in that club, um, I started to do a lot of strength and conditioning for Brazilians, Brazilian okay. guys, friends, and it grew by itself. You know, we, and then I was working full time because I was coaching the morning, working the evening yeah. uh, in the club. And Natasha as well. Um, we had pretty much. Uh, we we stay here without need to have the club anymore. Yeah. Um, we opened a, a free zone company for personal training. Okay. Uh, we I did that for a year, uh, and we I was pretty much driving Dubai around. Okay. You know? And that was that was the year that I prepared for Nice, the full Ironman. So at that point you were able to, so work's picking up, you were able to combine, so, combine so I, both. So I, I saw, the, I think what happened that time was, I saw that triathlon was going to grow a lot in UAE. Yeah. I saw that. You know, I went in one race and I saw like, oh wow, it's going to pick it up. Yeah. And then I saw Hamdan complex, I saw the beach, I saw Al Qudra. And then, to grow up. and then I'm like, hmm, these guys, we're going to have triathlon here. I'm, um, so let's, I, I said that's to her, let's stay. I think I can do. Okay. You know, I think I can do it. So, and she's like, but what are you going to do? I said, I think it, I think I can stay with triathlon here, uh, okay. coaching. I said oh, to her. It's quite exciting time. Though. Yeah. I said to her, and she's, she was a bit concerned, you know, like from football to triathlon, should you go back? Maybe. I said, no, no, let's stay. I think I can do um, uh, The funny thing is I didn't think to have a big triathlon club. Yeah. You know, it was not the goal. The goal okay. was like, let's have some guys training and coach personal training, strength okay. and athletes. You know, I had some jiu-jitsu athletes, some friends that they want to do something more serious. Okay. And then I had to drop a little bit that my team, you know, the the yeah, guys yeah, because they changed my life I have to we, we moved to another uh, place so I was not living in Manzer so it changed yeah. and I went back for four triathletes okay. again wow uh, okay. uh, beginners like okay. complete beginners um, friends like friends so, so it was all quite generally like the theme is of 
it's all quite organically yeah. grows. You'll you take one decision and then it'll you'll just kind of see how it how yeah. goes. But the the goal wasn't quite clear clear at the that beginning. point. No. You just kind of waited for that to Yeah. Well then Which is which is quite different to in terms of how you approach your sport yourself. You said you want yeah. you want a clear goal um to to keep your focus. But this was more work was a little bit more fluid, the, I guess. The the work the goal of the work Work is make money, yeah. you know. So <laughs> live, work yeah. is make money. Yeah. Make money. Uh, I was trying to figure out at that time in Dubai what was going to be the most efficient way to, to make money and stay. Yeah. Uh, and stay. Um, Natasha was very well set with all her clients. You know, she was pretty much she could even stay here alone. You know, yeah. she was very well set. Um, I was debating with myself should I push triathlon um, should I stay with personal training okay. should I do join a gym get the, a little bit more stable maybe they pay my salary I was thinking about that uh, but every time I look around I'm like it doesn't look better than what I'm doing okay. you know and I have my flexibility I can set up this client and go to swim then I do yeah. this and I go for a bike yeah. so I'm like hmm, I will stay like this um, until the owner of a gym called Fast. So what was uh, BR at the start? No, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a BR start, but uh, far like from that. Back. Yeah, further, further back. back. Okay. Um, then this guy sent me a message on Facebook, and he said, "Oh, I need to talk to you. I think I have something good for you." Yeah. I saw your profile. Uh, and then I went to talk to him and he offered me a, a really tiny uh, studio okay. inside of um, a place here, you know, called it Ahdaf. Okay. Um, and I went there and I said to Natasha, I think all my clients, I can move here. Okay. Uh, and then we accept. So I started that gym for him there. Okay. And I tried to jump a little bit harder on the triathlon. So I raced harder in Dubai. I started to get some results. So you became a bit more noticed. Yes, people started to know me a little bit more yeah. at some podiums and ah, who's this guy, yeah. you know, who's this guy? And I started to train with a few of the Try Dubai guys. Yeah. Uh, I remember um, uh, Vicky. Uh, some guys yeah. that uh, they were around and knowing more people yeah. um, and then was kind again. of one after the other so organically growing again yeah, yeah. <laughs> going again and then all this training for Ironman yeah. I, I was really on the corner thing okay like really um, I said I set up a plan to do the hardest Ironmans before Kona okay so I said I would do everything that is really hard before I do Kona. So I did Nice, uh, then... Lanzarote. So I know, yeah, but I did Frankfurt uh, in the middle. Okay. Because I wanted to see what I could do and I was not prepared yet for a fast race. Then I did Lanzarote, I think. Yeah. Yes. And then Malaysia was your qualifier. Then Malaysia. Yeah, okay. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back to um, to Kona and your, your next big challenge. Mm. Usually when uh, a person is stressed and they're trying to uh, work on healthier habits, and that's what happens to most of us, is we try to work on healthier habits, but, but we have certain internal stressors that prevent us from developing those good habits. So we start, we get stressed, and then we stop. So my job is to intervene right at the point where they start and where they stop so they can continue. So I'm giving them the power and the tools to continue to build these healthy habits long-term. Right, welcome back to Be Our Words. Uh, we're here today with uh, myself, Coach Melina, and our head coach at Be Our Performance Studios, Coach um, Joao. Um, we've been getting to know Joao and how um, his journey has brought him from uh, Brazil um, from swimming background to endurance and uh, more specifically triathlon um, and his professional career starting in a football club 
um, into strength and conditioning. He's he's known in Dubai, in the UAE, as one of the best strength and conditioning coaches. Thank you. Um, and coming up to um, triathlon in, in Dubai and developing that here. Um, those of you who know him will know he's a uh, Kona qualifier uh, for Ironman World Championships and a Kona finisher, more yes. importantly. Very important. More importantly, it's not just about getting there, it's about getting to that finish line. So um, just to briefly touch upon that, because most uh, triathletes um, or those that come into triathlon and they start learning about Ironman, um, Kona is pretty much the yeah. uh, the ultimate yeah. dream one way or another. Um, I think we, we all... Um, we all talk about um, mm. getting there. Um, how did that live up to? So, how did the idea and the dream of I want to get to Kona? Um, how did being there live up live up to him? What was the reality of it? Um, you know, when I signed up for Malaysia, I um, I wanted to do a good race. Yeah. You know, I knew I had the level. Uh, I could see by the sessions, the volume of training, the, yeah. the the performance here comparing to the other guys in Dubai. You know, you start to see like, hmm, it's going well. You know, yeah. um, people start to talk, and the, during each session, uh, we I always train with very strong guys. You know, so the level of the sessions is always um, pretty it's high. Pretty high, and you can match and compare yourself yeah. um, so I knew I was really in a good shape but Ironman is Ironman you know you're gonna be there for 10 hours if you're lucky or more more for some of us yeah more uh, <laughs> and you have to negotiate with yourself to see how, what's gonna happen there um, there was a little bit pressure from the team the team was big already you know for me to qualify uh, in that race but I didn't actually put that pressure in my head okay um i travel with jamie that race i think and his wife sarah and um he did a half ironman and i was doing the full okay so i had the chance that they could give me some feedback during the race yeah okay. of what was going to happen um i remember to finish the bike ride and then his wife Sarah, she said a number and it was 17 or something like that. Okay. Um, so I thought I was 17 on the race, uh, starting to run on yeah. 17th position. In my head, it didn't make sense, but I said, okay, that's not gonna race, you know? Yeah. Um, just run as hard as you can to have a good race. So the first 21K, I. I didn't bother with Connor. So you weren't racing at that point. Yeah, in my head. You were there to yeah. yeah, okay. So I did this U turn and I came out of the warehouse. Uh, they, they have a. On the transition is. So you always pass, pass in the AC okay. for 30 seconds and nice. you come out in the 60, <laughs> nice. 75 okay. minutes. It's a disaster. When I came out like this, uh, I think Jamie said, You were third. Oh, I'm wow. Like, what? what? I'm third. What do you mean third? You were third? You know, you're still third. I'm like, since when? Since the bike. So she gave me the bike time. Oh, bless. Okay. And I couldn't hear. Yeah. Um, so I'm how like, did, oh my God. How did that change in your head at that point? I you? No, then I thought, I, I hope I did not destroy my race. Yeah. You know, because I was running harder than I could. Okay. A little bit. And I start to feel the cramps, you know. Like they start to come, I'm like, it doesn't matter, 17, you know, what can I do here? Um, I cannot do anything. <laughs> Now it's changed. <laughs> now, now, I'm third. You, now Kona's a reality now I'm possibility. Third. Now so I'm yeah. third. And then I start to think about Kona. And I start to think about everyone here. I'm like, okay, if you mess up now, it's a disaster. You know. So how how did you manage all those thoughts? Because those those kind of thoughts would be enough to So I cramped exactly that minute. <laughs> there you the go. The first cramp <laughs> yeah, so came that. exactly there, you know. Okay. Just to see how the brain works with the body. Uh, first cramp in the hamstring there, boof, and I'm like, oh my god, halfway to go with this marathon. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't get easier, you know, it's just a marathon. In the yeah. heat, it just get harder. So, so I had to, I had to be smart that race. Yeah. To be very smart. I had to walk um, AD station to AD station. And then I had the mistake that was my, saved my life. 
So this guy passed me, okay. and I was third, right? And he passed, and I saw his number, okay. and I misread the number, right? His age group. So when I when I passed him, I saw him like, oh my god, this is the fourth. Okay. So I thought, okay, I have to, I have to chase. I him. have to chase him because right. this is the fourth and the third. I want to be in the podium. Yeah. I raised him. The entire race until he sprint, sprint in the finish line. I sprint. And he wasn't in your age group. <laughs> <laughs> so, finish, I almost collapsed. Yeah. Ah, that, that's good. And then I, you know, when they come and give the food and stuff, and I'm like, he's beside me, and I'm like, man, what a race, man. Wow, I'm sorry, you know, I wish you could be in the podium. And he's like, what do you mean? I won. <laughs> so, so he was yeah. one age group uh, ahead okay. of me, you know. Yeah. So he was the 40, 40, 44. So race, so race your race. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but in that guy kept me going with the pain, you know. He kept me going because I said I cannot lose for him. It gave so you, I, it gave you a focus. So at I did a not stop. Tough point. Yeah. I was cramping all over the run. Yeah. Um, and, but I did not stop because of the cramp. You should see how I walk the next day. Is there a video? We'd there love is a to video. I have to, have to find the video. video. <laughs> there is a video. They made a video of me downstairs. It's exhausted. That's the important It's one. insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's what's going on. How did, um, how did it feel to, to know that you, or, or when, when you found out you had got the Kona? I, yeah, I wish it, in this moment our brain could capture everything. That's what I Relive wish, it. you know. Yeah. But in these um, moments, um, everything comes together, you know, like, whoa, wow. Yeah. And you think about when you were young and this and that and how long it take and the whole journey. And you think like, okay, if this is possible, what else is possible? Yeah. That's a dangerous way of thinking. Well, and we, we, all, we, all, <laughs> we all know what came after. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. so that came after, you know, and I'm like, oh. So if I do that much of training, I can get here. And if I do a little bit more. more <laughs> what comes after, which. That was the problem. Yeah. So I think one of the mindsets that scare me is this for me. I go like, yeah, if I do this much of effort, I will get here. But I don't say, when I get there, I, I always say, I need to do that's, a little bit more. That's not the end, yeah. You know, okay. um, there's more to come. Iron Man for me, it taught me, it's teaching me everything, you know. Um, I, my personality doesn't see the end of the, as an yeah. Iron Man. You know, I know there is something else, mm -hmm, you know. Which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, yeah. And then from that thing, also there is something else. Yeah. I know that. Uh, you know, because the journey that I, I see that I like to take is is a personal challenge. Yeah. So when I feel that I get to the point that I get not comfortable, but I I feel let's say I feel that I control that environment. Yeah. Right. So, so I control the triathlon environment, the Ironman environment. Quite familiar to you. Yeah. You want to step out of your comfort zone because I my brain needs some more action. And that's how um, the UAE man came about. So the UAE man came when I finished Lanzarote. Yeah. Um, so before, sorry, yeah. um, just for those that don't know what the UAE man challenge is, um, you swam the English, well, you didn't swim the English channel, you swam the English channel distance yeah. um, over at, um, in, in Iraq. Yeah. Um, the next day you Everested at Jebel Jace. Yeah. Um, and the day after you did the Hajar 100, yeah. not the official race, but the, the distance and, and, and the route. So it was a 34 kilometer swim on day one. Um, uh, 8,848 8, meters elevation over how many kilometers in the end? 300. 300 Ks. So that's seven and a half times Jebel Jays. Or is it seven, eight? Seven, seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then a hundred kilometer uh, tra trail run um, in, the, um, yeah, in, in the Hajar Mountains. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just saying that they always. Yes. Yeah. Um, but going back to what you said earlier, that if um, you felt that you know you you worked hard for Kona to get your qualification slot, you you had a systematic approach. You wanted to try all the difficult Ironmans first before yeah. you did that. You got your qualification actually at a pretty hard yeah. event um, in terms of the course profile and the weather because Malaysia is very hot and, mm. and, and humid. You went to Kona, um, so you ticked that box uh, and then you felt you needed something bigger and this is how UAE man So the UAE man came after Lanzarote. I did Lanzarote before, before, before Malaysia. Before Malaysia, yeah. yeah. I did Lanzarote and I did not you didn't have a good day from what I, I didn't remember, yeah. you had a yeah. stomach issue. So I had back issue, I had stomach yeah. my god, that race was a mess. You um, still did 11 and a half hours, so let's not, lock uh, yeah. let's not knock it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 yes, yeah. no, it was, um, <laughs> uh, let's say, um, I did not feel good from the beginning, yeah. you know, of the, the race. The whole trip was weird, you know, for me and Natasha, we were playing on a holiday, and then the plane, and then... The, our plane from Dubai had to come back. Yeah. The plane had a problem. The whole th then the bike. Uh, wow, it was a bit. You know, when you feel you want to enjoy, but uh, it looks like life is giving you just yeah. a. You know, you're you're able to overcome all these issues because, like I said, even in Lanzarote, I almost you, quit that race. Almost the first you didn't, one. And you still yeah. for what is. Um, it's up there with one of the tough ones. The elevation's pretty high in Lanzarote. It's hot. It's known for um, the winds. Um, what helps you push through those bits? Like you ha um, you're having a bad day. Your body is effectively screaming at you to yeah. stop, but you're just no. So I go. said that race, I. So that really is a bit special because I did it for my father, he passed away. Okay. So there's no way I would stop. Okay. Okay. So that race was a bit different. Um, there's no way I would stop that race. And um, so that, I said, you know, I lie down here, but I'm going to finish this race. Okay. And I had to stop the bike four times to stretch wow. my back. It was, it was a mess. But, you know, like, um, it is about to finish, right? So you start to finish. For yeah. me, unless I am um, going to die, <laughs> I will finish. You know? um, so we're not encouraging that, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I think you have to know your limits. You know how much you can take it until you die. That's a different story. But if I am feeling that I gonna, I can walk. I'm gonna yeah. walk. You know. Um, it's not uh, something that I will push myself until I die. That's not the mindset. For me, it's like I will keep going until I cannot go anymore. Right? Um, that same year, I signed up for the Arc to Arc, Arch to Arc yes, in that. London. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to cross the English Channel. Yeah. You run from London to Dover, cross the English Channel, swimming and bike. Yeah. So I finished the Lanzarote. We had a problem. The company was moving to BR. Yeah. That was the same year. Um, they had to change visas. M myself and Natasha had to spend a um, month in Oman. Okay. It's uh, good training. Yes. <laughs> it was a good training. Yeah. Um, but we are not in a good environment there to yeah. train. So my training for art to art was a little bit off. And I did not very. I had a very clear idea of how to get there. Okay. Um, so when I went to London to do the thing, um, was not well prepared. It was a big okay. mistake to don't prepare properly. Okay. Um, and then I failed. I stopped the swim. I got really close to cross that channel, very, very close. Uh, probably like another 45 minutes I was going to cross. But that was the point that I said I was probably going yeah. to die. Okay. Because I drowned twice and then I came back up and then, uh, so I said, okay, okay, I think that's it. This is it you yeah. try enough. Okay. Um, so they take, they took me out, and and that's it. Okay. When I came back, 
um, this is before Malaysia. When I came back, I decided to focus a lot on on Kona, yeah. even more. But I also felt that I could do something else here. Okay. And that's when you were That's yeah. when we started to be in my head. A little idea in your yes. head. Yeah. And then from all these years since Lanzarote and since the art what is 2017, I think. Yeah. I think 2017. Um, until the UAE man now, in 2021, yeah. I was planning to do that yeah. already. And I spoke with a few guys and everyone said, no, no, there's no way we can do so this. You, so for you, that was, and everybody that translated to, okay, then yeah, <laughs> let's, find exactly. a, let's find a way to do this. Exactly. So, okay. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, the, the guy that say, uh, the, uh, the engineer that say you cannot do, you change the engineer, yeah. you know? So That's that was me good. doing that. Like, okay, next, next, next. And two, I found, um, uh, Tommaso. Yeah, he's listening. So yeah. yeah. So I found Tommaso, and Tommaso was a very important uh, uh, person for me because he accepted to get it off the ground. He, he bought yeah. the idea, and he, we all know him in the in BR very very well. He's extremely uh, structured. Organized. Yes. Yes. Commander. Yeah. So the commander. <laughs> so from the minute that I told him that I was going to do until actually, I actually mm -hmm. see that happen. He already had contact the hotels, create an Instagram account, yeah. um, put the plan <clears throat> yeah. and, um, and create the whole thing around. Yeah. So I'm like, Ooh, okay. How Let did me change my entire life now yeah. because I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I changed my life. How did, how did that feel at that point when, so there's, there's two main questions, I guess. So the first one is you've got this tiny little idea in your head that's constantly at the back. Yeah, um, exactly that. You, people are telling you not to. You have to, to know the next one. Yeah, so you're not <laughs> quite sure how it's going to go. Then suddenly you're thinking, oh my God, this could actually work. I was panicking. Um, so that's a heck of a focus to give to your training. How did that... Um, yeah, how, how did that actually help or how did it translate into... Um, a, a plan for it because at this point you're you know our, the BR team is is growing we're going through COVID anyway um, potentially the, the Dubai Ironman's happening which is a very big busy time of year for us um, and yet somehow you're managing to pull, my pull God. this off yeah. it's so, so many things what did you know? it take? I had Antonia I had my parents-in-law so and I'm seeing the COVID coming on and yeah. basically got cancel and I'm like and we put it out of this challenge mm -hmm. And our guys fighting to do the Dubai Half Ironman. Yeah. Um, we keeping up the team really strong. You know, all the coaches did we, you know, um, amazing job to keep going. And we had some very key important sessions for me that they were structured and that they helped a lot, which was yeah. the three sea swims yeah. with the runs. So those sessions, they were key for me. So um, those were non-negotiables for you every week. They were there. You couldn't shift them. That was my life. Everything built around yeah. them. Yes. yes. So I built everything around the swim. Yeah. Because no swim, the challenge is over. Yeah. Right? So I, everything was okay. Get the swim covered and then find out a way to prepare for the bike. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. The bike. For me, it was very important. So we have the structure here at BR. We know we can With the ride studio. indoor the cycling yeah. studio. Um, you can ask our guys. I was doing meetings, cycling jobber days up, <laughs> ordering pasta and food sandwich yeah. here. Okay. I was sitting in that studio like a lot. Yeah. Um, it is a lot of compromise. You know, you compromise a lot of work, family. Uh, you push everyone. Because I, yeah, you don't do these things alone. Yeah. Everyone has to do it with you. So the entire BR coach, team, staff, they have to buy with me because I'm not there anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm not. This time, for example, I, I would be in the sea. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what did what did the preparation for the UAE Man Challenge? Um, I know it, it is a. It's probably a loaded question, but just the prep, the leading up to. The, 
that morning, what did it teach you or what was your main sort of takeaway message from that? That if, if someone said to you, okay, those however many months it was leading up to it, what was the most important bit that's come out of that for you? And especially something like if we look, I, if you think about well, all the athletes that we've got, they look up to you, the whole team was behind yeah. you with that. Um, what would you say to them? So it tells something. Um, um, that preparation, that race, that challenge, it, it taught me more than Conan. More than Conan. And it, I tell you why. Because Conan, it, it is an Ironman that I am surrounded with people. Yeah. And you have professional athletes racing with you. So you kind of have that um, feeling that it's going to be really hard to achieve yeah. something. Um, unless you turn yourself into that level. Yeah. Right? But the UMN challenge was something that you raise your hand and say, I will do. <laughs> and you buy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that feeling, it was. Um, I think the learning there is like, um, if you want, for me, personally speaking, what the biggest um, uh, learning on that journey is, if you want to do something, you have to do really well. So you have to apply yourself. It's an all or nothing approach. And big. Yeah. So, so yeah. people cannot forget. Yeah. Um, Certainly Unless <laughs> you keep going small and you might go through everything, but you're not making, you're not you're not making gonna a make a difference. Yeah. So okay. I think if people want really to change something and they have to be able to forget everything and Thank really you. go full gas okay. on, yeah. on, the, on what okay. they want. That was what I learned more. So thinking about, <laughs> I'm almost too scared to ask this question. <laughs> um, so UAE man came out of um, wanting something bigger and a bit more of a challenge out of um, after Iron Man, especially after ticking the Kona box. <laughs> UAE is very what, big, you know. What's I'm <laughs> too scared to ask, but um, UAE is very what's big. What's next? It's a big country. Okay. So. <laughs> UAE is a big country. S so it's so, safe to say you're working on something else. Um, yeah. yeah. My wife is listening, but yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. UAE is a big country. Mm, okay. um, so we're not done. Yeah, we have the, seven. Uh, seven Emirates. Emirates. So let's okay, see. Let's see what I need the, the commander to be close to me. Yes, and well, and for now. But we're gonna do something. For now, Antonio is gonna have a little sister, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we need to work on that challenge. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna um, wait them too. Okay, just to um, thanks for your time today. Just to wrap Thank up, you. I know we've probably gone a little bit over, and Damaz is gonna yes, be um, gonna... gonna have a lot of editing to do. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah, kind of touching on that on the, on your last point, we've got eighty odd athletes in our team, and the team is growing constantly. Um, you're the head coach. You're a a leader and we all kind of follow suit um, if you had to I guess you know describe yourself in a very succinct way maybe not one word but because um, you and I can chat for England so um, mm. um, maybe not one word but um, yeah what would you say or how would you like the team to when they ask someone asks who's Joao what to what to say mm. 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 Like, yeah. um, I am a guy that I like challenge so um, if you say to me like how how do you see yourself I see myself as a person that doesn't accept the, the situation yeah I don't I don't try to stay the same um, I bet you will never see me accepting to stay the same yeah um, and most probably I don't accept people around me to stay the, to same. Stay the same so I am I like to challenge myself and I like to challenge so whoever is around me so those um, are the expectations you put on yourself and your athletes because I know everybody can do more yeah you know you always can do more okay. so you might feel you cannot but you can you can do so then, okay. So all the all your athletes listening, 
to be fair, I'm sure that's not going to come as much of a <laughs> much of a surprise. But um, know that he's going to push you even further. Okay, so thank you very much for your thank time you. today. Um, Domazo is over to you. And, <laughs> uh, next week uh, we're going to carry on with the meet the coaches theme, that's and we've got Alessio next week. Oh, I, I think so. Okay, so we'll see. Thanks for listening, and we'll thank speak you. to you guys next week. Thank you.